except for that one. I need one more click. There we go, finally. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I had computer problems. Um, when was it? Gosh, it was last uh, a week ago, Monday. Or was it this last Monday? No, it was a week ago, Monday. I had computer problems. I, I got a virus on my on my computer. Put all this new software on it. So I don't know what happened, but I, I usually I, I sit down 10 to 15 minutes early and try to get the, the uh, uh, everything checked in and everything else. And it could not find my camera. So I said, well, I'll just reboot. So I rebooted. And when I rebooted and called up my, my previous tabs in, in uh, uh, Chrome, then it had the Council of Tramnia was playing. And I've, I've been studying uh, the, the uh, canonization of the Bible. And so the Council of Tramnia was one of the four tr councils uh, that led to the Council of Rome in 415, where the Bible was canonized. And uh, I was listening to this Council of Tramnia notes, and I could not see a tab anywhere. So I, I closed out all my tabs, and it was still running. There was no other Chrome running. So I said, well, I'll just have to reboot again. So that's what I had to do. I had to go through the entire reboot process twice. I apologize for my tardiness, but it looks like things have worked out. So yay, we're here. Thank you for your patience. I greatly appreciate it. Let's see who all's here. Um, I know that I, I saw somebody I said hi to. Little on Prepper, Cats and Prepping, Triple G Farms, uh, Muskoka Oma, uh, Fioxerus, Diana too, um, Aussie Life. Uh, Maggie, and then I, of course, then I got on at 8.05 and said I'm having computer problems. But see, that was, I logged in, but I, I didn't log into um, StreamYard. So what it did was it recognized me as an outsider. I couldn't get anything to come up. That's when I had to reboot again so that I could log in as the uh, owner of the, pro, of the, of the program. Um, let me see. Let me, who else? Anybody else? Diana, too? Uh... So we are under severe, uh, Barrett Foley, that's a new name. Welcome, sir. Um, we are under severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, the, the county, well, actually, it's in this county. As a matter of fact, it's the, it's the town where my mother bought that piece of property uh, that my sister and I sold after she passed for 25% of what she paid for it. And uh, But they are receiving right now, and it's coming this way, uh, but they have golf ball, softball, and grapefruit-sized hail. So we are under severe storm, uh, storm warning here. Uh, so if all of a sudden I just die, understand that we've gotten been we've been hit with extremely large hail. Um, uh, no, there is not an, a chapter that I'm aware of on how to organize it. Um, there's a. I'll tell you what, I will do a, a video on how mine is organized. Uh, I'm not saying that's the right way. I'm not saying it's the best way. I'll just tell you how I do mine. And, uh, you know, I think people adapt as, as they see fit. Uh, I did a video for the uh, prep and, uh, National Prepper Month. And uh, we there was a coalition of 30 preppers who did each did a video for National Prepping Month. And we were talking about some of our greatest mistakes. And one of my mistakes is, uh, when I do, when I built my uh, prepping pantry, my, my room, uh, I put all of my shelves. So if you imagine it, the room is shaped like this, okay? I put my shelves like this, you know, up against the wall, and then that way you can't reach behind and store your your newest in the back. You need to store them. You put your shelves this way to the wall, so you can put your old food over here and draw. I mean, put your new food over on this side and then draw it out on this side, so you have easy access to uh, putting your food in and taking it out uh, so you can rotate a lot easier that way. The way that I currently have it done, I have to basically remove an entire row of food and shuffle everything forward and then start with the newest and put it back in the back, uh, which is quite an endeavor when you're uh, when you're restocking. So, uh, but I, I'll, I'll do a, a video on that. That's a great, let me write a note on that. Uh, how to organize food pantry. And then, okay, I can go through a bunch of the lessons that I've learned over the course of the last 40 or 50 years with that as well. Um, and I've made a lot of mistakes. So I'll share all my, I won't share all of them because I don't know if I'll remember all. I've made more mistakes than I can remember. But I'll share with you the vast majority of the <coughs> mistakes that I've made. 
so and hopefully you won't make the same ones. Um, you know, learn from my from my experience. Um, uh, let me see. Sumi says it looks dark and stormy to the west, and the quality of light was odd, but I didn't have any glasses on. Um, let me see here. And, and part of that, too, is, uh, you know, I gave up on it. Uh, at one point, I did a uh, uh, spreadsheet on, uh, I'll show you my spreadsheet. I'll show you one page of my spreadsheet. Um, let me see if I can get it up here. Uh, I did a, uh, let me find her, that shut down. <laughs> I always keep it, it's always active. Uh, but uh, spreadsheet and recents. Uh, That's not Excel. That's Word. Okay. Launchpad. I'm going to go over here. Then we've got to go to Excel. And so this is only showing quantities. It doesn't show expiration dates. I gave up on that. That got too futile. I, I had locations, like it's in room one, shelf system three, shelf three. You know, that time, man, that got consuming. That got that was way too laborious, and I, I just gave up on that as well. Uh, so now I just keep a simple inventory of, hey, I have this many in stock, and uh, I don't do my canned goods. I, I don't keep a stock of canned goods. My, my thought process there is when I get a canned good, um, I, I, if I take one out of inventory, I replace it with two. And it's gotten to the point now to where I can't, I don't have any space to put two in there for every one I take out. So I just replace one for one. And you'll see those on my weekly pantry hauls. Come on, open up Excel. Why won't you open up? Come on. I can't open it with my keyboard. I can't open it with my mouse. I don't know what's going on. My computer's, there we go. Connection lost with the mouse. Okay, why? There we go. Now it's coming up. Yay. So open emergency pantry. Last uh, last entry was Friday at 8.59 a.m. Open. And... Is there anything in particular you would like to see, um, Skoka Oma? I've got here. Here are my categories of, of pages for my uh, for my uh, pantry. I have bakery, coffee and drinks, dairy, entry, entrees, fruit, meat, miscellaneous, nutrient survival, pasta, protein, sauces, soups, vegetables. Uh, let me see here. What comes after vegetables? Um, Spices and herbs, dry packages, fuel and light, cans, cans is not up to date, ammo, and LDS cans. So if there's any of those in particular you would like to see, I'll be happy to show you one of those. Uh, let me get down here to see if what your answer is. Uh, and then, of course, you saw how I marked my cans. I use a, uh, and it's a, it's, I use one of these big Sharpies. Uh, so I use that and I mark it both on the lid on the top so I can look down on it if necessary and I also mark it across the front. What I typically put for my canned goods, packaged goods and everything else that I, that I purchase until the 15th of month of the month, I always put the previous month. So up until the 15th of April, I'm going to put down 324 to show that I put that in stock in, in March of 24. And then I know that that's one of the newest ones, so I have to put that back in the back and everything else moves up forward. Um, just a lot of people, some people like to do it with the expiration date on a can. Uh, since we aren't really that concerned about expiration dates on cans, I found it superfluous and, and too difficult. So what I did was I just said, when did I get it? You know, and I go by those dates of when I got it. Uh, let me see here. Does she answer? Uh... Hi, Holly. Welcome. F. Peer, welcome. Good to see you. Oh, F. Peer. So here, here's what happens is if you're here for a while and uh, 
and and you're consistent and add good value to the to the channel, then I give you a wrench. Uh, originally, there were only about five or six people who had wrenches, and we had a couple trolls on the channel and people who weren't adding value and people who were causing chaos. And I just needed more people to get rid of those people. So once I know who you are and how you're going to participate and everything else, uh, then absolutely, you know, then, then send me an email after a couple months or a month or so, and I'll be more than happy to give you a wrench. Uh, but uh, I just, I, I need to control trolls. And we haven't had that many, thank God. Uh, but, you know, that's the way it is. F. Pierre, welcome. Uh, Annie Luhu, one. You've been, this is, I, I know at least your second time. So welcome back. Good to see you. Okay. So let me share, uh, present. Uh, share screen. And we're going to go to, do you want to do the myths of the Council of Jamnia? No, that, that's what I was trying to get rid of. Uh, let me see. So it's in a different window in Microsoft Excel. There we go. Chrome has lost permission to capture the screen. To fix it, go to Chrome Silver. No, it's going to be too much trouble. I, I've got to readjust everything after, after. I'm still suffering the effects of having had that uh, um, worm get in my, my computer a week ago. But anyhow, I will fix it, and I'll give you a screenshot of uh, one of my uh, one of the pages of my uh, uh, inventory. So, food storage for peppers. About time we got there. We're almost halfway through. Uh, so it's uh, eight twenty-three. And we're only in, we haven't even gotten into the book. Food storage for peppers. And yes, I'm still down with uh, uh, COPD. Uh, taking some breathing treatments, and that seems to be helping an awful lot. Uh, finally, got my uh, uh, doxycycline and my and my prednisone. So my, my behavior may be erratic and weird. <coughs> Prednisone does that to me. Uh, I've had a couple of, wow, interesting things. Maggie sent me a phenomenal present. I'll, show, I'll, I'll, I'll do an unwrapping of that, uh, unboxing of it, uh, a public unboxing uh, with my uh, prepper pantry hall uh, Saturday, but a phenomenal present. Thank you, Maggie. And... Uh, so she sent me the tracking, and I arrived here in in in, in the uh, Round Rock area on um, Sunday morning. And I went Monday morning to check my mail, and it wasn't there. And then I went again this morning to check my mail, and it wasn't there. So I took the tracking notice to the to the person, the PO clerk. I said, "Hey, this says that it's here, and there's nothing in my box saying that I've received it. Can you check on this for me?" So she came back a couple minutes later and said, "Oops, sorry, we didn't put a notice in your box." Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I would like to know that I've gotten mail. Well, now I forgot where I was going to go with that. There was another thing that that happened, the same thing, uh, but with something else. And and so I've just had problem getting notifications of things happening here recently. And it's kind of disheartening that, uh, you know, let's blame it on the eclipse. <laughs> oh, that's a Biden thing, isn't it? Let's whispering. Let's blame it on the eclipse. Okay. Don't want to do that. Um, okay, so we're, we're doing this book, Food Storage for Peppers, and I hope my new book gets here. Um, it's, Amazon says it's supposed to be here tonight. It's Eusebius, uh, and he wrote this book in 102 AD, and that's the history of the church or the history of, of uh, Christianity starting from 32 AD to, to when he wrote the book in 103 AD. Uh, it's kind of a brother to Didike, uh, and Didike is, is the uh, basically the worship manual uh, that was used by the Christians after 33 AD up until the adaptation of the Missal. And uh, so, you know, then you went between the Didache and, and the Missal, and then we used the, we've used the Missal ever since. Uh, but uh, it's interesting stuff historically. Oh, my gosh. If you haven't read Josephus, read Josephus. Uh, that's a Roman who wrote about the, the history of, of the Jews in Jerusalem, and he also test, uh, has testimony towards uh, the crucifixion. So it's always interesting to get uh, historical church writings as well as historical non-church writings to find out what was going on with uh, the church at that time in Jerusalem and around the surrounding area. Okay, so the uh, what we were supposed to have picked up in week nine in preparation for tonight was another uh, bottle of 500 aspirin, five cans of cream of chicken soup, 
uh, 50 pounds of wheat, flour, whatever, and uh, seven boxes of macaroni and cheese. So um, let me see here. Can I reach it? Maybe I can. I went, I went to... Uh, I went to two places in uh, today. I went to the uh, LDS uh, Provident Living Center because they had the new uh, a new product, and they told me about it. And I wanted to get it last Saturday, but I drove there and they were closed for their general uh, whatever meeting. So I picked up two new cans. Uh, this is a brand new product from the LDS uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. So they now have these. This is one third the price of what you're going to pay for it on Amazon. It's thirteen dollars a bottle, uh, a can, and on Amazon it's about forty, forty-five, somewhere around in that vicinity. I saw it on sale. Augustine Farms has it on sale for like thirty-three dollars, I believe, or twenty-three dollars. Uh, but anyhow, this is thirteen, so it's definitely half the price of that as well. Uh, then in my in my meanderings today, because we're talking about wheat flour and things like that, so I, I like to pick up these uh, little Jiffy things. So this Jiffy corn muffin milk. If you take this and mix it with a, whoops, that's what we're supposed to get. So I'll show you that here in just a minute. And you mix it with this. Okay, that makes a great crust for something like a uh, Southwestern or, or King Ranch pie or a uh, railroad pie or something like that. That makes a great topping, a crust for any of those casseroles. Uh, then I picked up, of course, you know, one can of chicken soup, cream of chicken soup. Uh, I picked up also a... Um, box of Jiffy uh, cake mix, and this is so I can make a uh, uh, cobbler, especially with the uh, strawberries that I picked up. And then I got two boxes of, of pudding. So that's kind of what I did today. And that'll all be in the, the Prepper Pantry Hall for Saturday. Uh, not going to be that much for the Prepper Pantry Hall for Saturday. That might be it. We shall see. Okay, so now then for next week, in preparation for week 10, what we want to pick up is six pounds of salt, 20 pounds of sugar, eight cans of tomato soup, and 40 pounds of wheat. Now, remember when we say wheat, we're saying wheat, flour, uh, cake mix, pancake mix, any of those wheat-based products uh, that you're going to use in order to uh, uh, maintain your lifestyle when you're in a post-SHTF world. Um, I think last week I showed you, I, I picked up um, uh, pancake mix, which is another great one. And it's going to be very easy to cook in a post-apocalyptic world. Um, catch up with comments here. Gosh, I'm way behind on comments. Uh, Devil Dog, welcome. Um, you see here, today is the first day of Nissan. Today is very significant for the Jews right now. Yes, it is. Uh, that's a great idea, Maggie. Fantastic idea. Um, I do the same thing. I think I've shown you. I, I carry a little cut up three by five card in my wallet. And so, you know, what I want to buy. And then, of course, this is my stuff I rotate that I pick up one of these each week. Uh, and then on the back, special items. And then I, I have this really heavy-duty, uh, good eraser that, uh, you know, that um, it gets rid of most of that. So I always do it in pencil, except for the stuff I alternate. And that's how that's my system of saying I need to pick this up at the uh, at the store. Okay, for next week, for week number 10, we need uh, six pounds of salt, 20 pounds of sugar, eight cans of tomato soup, and 50 pounds of wheat products. Okay, project number 33 is kefir. Uh, I'm not a big fan of kefir, so if, if you are, the, the recipe and how to make it's in the book. Um, project number 34 is kombucha. Same thing, not a big fan. Uh, I, you know, I, I could probably eat it if I was forced to. You'd be surprised some of the stuff I was forced to eat in the military. Uh, project number 35 is crock pot yogurt. And uh, I'm just not a big fan of yogurt either. I'll tell you, the, the foods that are in this week's list, uh, they are not some of my favorites, okay? Uh, I mean, I, I could probably eat yogurt if I had to. It's just the idea of putting something live in my body. 
uh, after I had my abdominal surgery, they wanted me to put uh, probiotics in my body uh, because of all the antibiotics that they had given me. And, and they said that one of the best probiotics is yogurt. And I said, no, give me a pill. I, I, I don't want to do yogurt. So they show how to make mason jar oatmeal. And then project number 36, we end up with this hot pepper joint cream. And this is actually a good first aid thing that you can make. It's a salve or a liniment. Uh, and you can use it uh, basically for if you run out of Icy Hot or Bengay or something like that. This would be one of those fantastic salves uh, to put on sore joints or sore muscles or something like that. It's almost here. The storm. We just got a phone call with that severe storm. Oh, we just got a reverse 911. About the the uh, severe storm is here. So Helen is walking out in the backyard to, to see if she can watch the severe storm under the uh, shade of the patio. It had been downgraded to golf ball. Okay, it's been downgraded to golf ball size hail. From, grapefruit. From the grapefruit, yeah. Okay. And it's still doing major damage. Mm. They said mm. expect your windshields and your windows of your house to be broken out. So they, 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 they said on the reverse 911, expect the windshields on your cars as well as the windows in your house to be broken out uh, with the hail that's coming. So we shall see. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, I don't know if I, I told y'all, but I lost my car. I had a, I had a 19... Oh, gosh, when did I get that? I'm going to say I had a 1917 Kia Sportage, one of the favorite cars I've ever owned. It was a fantastic car, and it was totaled uh, with a hailstorm in April, April 23rd, I think it was, of... Uh, 2021 and yeah because my pickup's three years old this april th this month and um, um but anyhow the uh um uh, it, it just got totaled with hail kia had just replaced the engine the engine had less than 100 miles on it the tires had less than a thousand miles on them and i had a full tank of gas and the car gets totaled went, oh god you know come on guys give me some credit here one of the things i did find out however is that every time you have a, a an accident, whether it's your fault or not, it, de it devalues the value of your car by $1,000 for trade-in. So since I had been hit three times, uh, they knocked off $3,000 on the value of the car. So make sure you recover that in your insurance claims when somebody hits you. Uh, say that you want to reclaim that, that loss of value in your car. Uh, so R2D2, welcome. Prepper Book Club, welcome. Uh, great to see both of you. Uh, Sumi, Devil Dog, I said hi to Pepper Book Club. Freedom Nugget, wow, that's a new one. Thank you, sir, for being here, or ma'am. Uh, it looks like a picture of a sir. I need my glasses on, but uh, welcome. So happy to have you with us. R2D2, uh, that, one of the reasons my wife is keeping me appraised is because we've lived here seven years. Our old house was a 3,700 uh, square foot house. We sold it because our daughter moved out. No sense having a five bedroom house and paying all those taxes and everything else uh, when there's just the two of us and two chihuahuas. So we bought this little bitty 1700 square foot house. Well, you can't fit 3,700 square feet of house into a 1700 square foot house. So the garage is full of stuff I still need to go through. And so every time she comes by to remind me about the hail, it's one of those little is that I need to get out there and get the garage cleaned up so we can get at least her car in. Um, I don't think she cares that much about the, the, the pickup. Although her car is paid for and pickup, we're still paying one. Um, so, oh, that's okay. I mean, it's going, whatever happens is going to happen. You know, that that's one of the, the things about being here in Central Texas is one of the reasons our homeowner's insurance is so high is because you end up replacing the roof about every four to five years uh, from hailstorm. So, you know, it's just, just one of the facts of living in Central Texas. Uh, so let me see. Prednisone makes me feel so... You, it, as I was talking uh, to the doctor yesterday when it was prescribed, I said, I tell you what, that's a miracle drug because normally um, <coughs> we start off with the heavy dose and then we do a weaning of it, you know, so like three days of, of two tablets, three days of one tablet, three days of half a tablet or four days of half a tablet, you know, that kind of a thing. And by the time I finish those first three days uh, of the two tablets, I'm cured. 
uh, now it's just kind of withdrawing your body from it afterwards. So um, it, it, it uh, definitely does some things to your hunger. It, it does some things to uh, some of your bodily functions, and it uh, does something to your emotions. It, at least it does to me. So, you know, that's kind of, I, I almost feel like I'm, I imagine if I was on drugs, uh, you know, that prednisone would give me that same effect. I, I imagine. I, I, I don't know for sure, but I imagine. Uh, oh, Maggie. Yeah. And, and you're talking about the tapering off, which is basically what I have to do. Uh, oh, I will, but I don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> you know, so um, the, the roof will hold up and on top of the roof are the solar panels. So, you know, we can, it, it'll damage the solar panels. We'll get those replaced and, you know, that's all there is to it. Uh, Muscova Oma says she has a Sorrento, uh, but now calling that thing a death trap could be quite an understatement. So the car that hit Helen, Helen was dri driving a Hyundai uh, Elantra, and uh, she got T-boned, and she was T-boned by a Sorrento. And the Sorrento was speeding and T-boned her. And uh, so Helen uh, ended up with three brakes in her left arm, uh, traumatic brain injury when her head went through the, the side window, the uh, seat belt almost amputated her left breast, cut completely through her bicep on her left arm, fractured her pelvis in seven spots, and she was in pretty bad condition in the Hyundai. Uh, but evidently, everybody that was in the Sorrento was injured even as badly, or if not worse. And uh, so, the, yeah, um, I, I would have a tendency to agree with you. The Sorrento is probably not one of the safest, but I will tell you that that, that, that Kia Sportage, I am super impressed with it. So Helen, um, it took her two years to get back to driving after the accident. And she said, uh, I like your car. If I had been in a bigger car like yours, I probably would not have been hurt as bad, would I? And I said, no. She says, okay, let's go down to the Kia dealership. They have what I want. So we went down to the Kia dealership and she bought a uh, Kia Sportage, just like mine. So for a couple of months, we had a white Kia Sportage and a blue Kia Sportage out in the driveway. And then mine got totaled when I was at work, when I, when I owned the uh, shipping store. And uh, actually, I was I was FaceTiming Helen, and she got to watch the hail actually destroy my car live as, uh, as, as I was standing out underneath the awning. It also destroyed my store sign and everything else, and you know, it, it was a bad hailstorm. Uh, yeah, we're supposed to have a worse than average um, hurricane season this year. Uh, so... Hello, Flyer Dad. How are you from the Netherlands, Amsterdam, uh, Belanda, as, as the Indonesians call it. So I love the Netherlands because I would go over to, uh, to, to Holland when I was uh, in Germany, and I was an Indonesian translator, and there were all kinds of Indonesian rayas. And so when I, uh, when I went into uh, the Netherlands, I always got my food for free because they were so ap appreciative to see an orang putih yang berbahasa, a white guy who speaks the language. So uh, uh, I, I got to eat all kinds of good Indonesian food for free in, in my visits to the Netherlands. Beautiful country, beautiful country. I still have nightmares about possibly getting caught on that one road that goes across the dikes, uh, that goes underwater during the tide. Um, I've had a couple nightmares about that, but, uh, you know, I guess they stop traffic ahead of time before you get on. So you have enough time to get across before the, uh, before the tide completely engulfs that, uh, that road. Um, but welcome, welcome. Or, or I don't know, do you say Willkommen or is that strictly German? And I know, and I know there's not great relationships between the Germans and the, and the Dutch for very good reasons. Um, Let me see. Uh, pretty much the the uh, the the. She still has a plate in her arm here, and that's for two of these. And then the one that's right here in the elbow, there's a bone. And that one still has not healed. So she still can't lift anything over five pounds. Uh, uh, so we were, we were talking, just talking about the hailstorms and, and my Kia. 
and why you now have a Kia Sportage instead of a a a, um, a, 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 a what did you have? I just said it. Hyundai Elantra. And uh, they want to know, are you feeling better as a result of the wreck? Yeah, it's been four or five years. She says, yeah, it's been four or five years. So, <clears throat> so she's doing fine. Okay. So that's pretty much it. We've got those four projects on, on making different kinds of foods and stuff. And uh, we've got the, the stuff for the storage. Let me see if I can't. Uh, let me see. Maybe one of you would like to come on and keep everybody entertained while I try to see if I can't find a way to. Um... So if you tap on this link, that'll bring you up live and uh, bring you up into the back room where I can bring you up live. And that way you can talk while I'm trying to, uh, while I am trying to uh, uh, get my Excel spreadsheet brought up. No, uh, you know, in this book, I don't believe there is one on, I picked up the wrong book. Uh, I don't believe there's anything special on, on medical supplies. <coughs> As a matter of fact, I think the only thing he has is he's got at the, at the summary he has uh, basically a thousand, uh, or five hundred aspirin, five hundred aspirin, and that's it. So you know, no, no, there's no medical supplies in here. Um, I like my medic, uh, and and I'm a distributor for them or, or an affiliate. I like their products. The only thing I don't like is I don't like their tourniquet. I would get a better tourniquet. I also augmented mine with. Um, a, a Sam splint and that's S A M splint. And, and, uh, <coughs> you can get those on Amazon. Uh, but it's basically a thin sheet of aluminum. And when you roll it or fold it, it becomes very stable. It's got styrofoam on both sides. So you can use it as a splint. Uh, so I would add, you know, some sort of a splinting material to that first aid kit. And the one that I chose from, uh, uh, the one that I chose from, uh, my medic is the IFAC, Individual First Aid Kit. Hi, Ollie. So here comes Ollie. Right, Ollie, I'm sorry. Hi, Holly. Hi. Yes. So I will let you lead the discussion while I try to bring up my Excel spreadsheet. How's that? That's good. Okay. It's all yours. Well, I'm not actually knowing what to discuss, but... I'm happy to see everybody. Um, but I would like to say that, you know, everything that's going on, we really need to be prepared. It's getting, you know, kind of scary. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, you're doing fine. Oh, huh. so Maggie, if you take a look in chat, Maggie would like to talk about uh, medical supplies. So tell us what you're doing um, with medical supplies. Yeah, definitely. Um, medical supplies. We have to have. Um, we really need tourniquets. Um, you know, uh, the. Uh, Oh, gosh. Well, there's so many stuff. Well, that's... No, my husband's trying to talk to me. No, we have to have, um, you know, all the above. We have to have, you know, the, um, the tourniquets, the... The this is my first time on. Okay. Uh, now, I'm now here's very here's nervous. Just a, a little bit of give you something to think about. Okay. Yeah, and I'm very nervous. Of CERT training. So CERT is the Community Emergency Response Team. If you have one in your area, it's some of the best first aid training you're ever going to get. It's better than what I got. Yeah. Right. 
Um, and, um, one of the things that we're taught is be careful what you put a tourniquet on. If yes. It, so I want I want to be I want to I want to advise people that in a post the the exercise that they put us on was we went onto a bus and the bus driver is bleeding he has he has a femoral uh, hemorrhage and we can save him if we put a tourniquet on him but there's 32 kids back in the back of the bus the rule is if you put a tourniquet on somebody you have to stick with that person so if i put a tourniquet on that bus driver to save him there may be three or four other lives children's lives that I could save and I can't save because I have to stay with the driver. So we have to do this triage. And that is, you know, who can we save? So if there are three or four level three injuries that I can save with a little bit of attention versus having to wait on a level four injury, which requires a tourniquet, choose to save the three or four instead of the one. And this is one exactly. of those things that's going to be very difficult in a post-apocalyptic world because <clears throat> we're going to have to make judgment calls that affect life and death. Yes. So I would say in a pre-apocalyptic world where we have 911 available to us, where we have ambulances, emergency rooms, and everything else, tourniquets are great. But what happens when you put a tourniquet on somebody? Then you have to write on their arm, and you have to leave it on until help comes. Until help comes. Right. Will help be coming in post-apocalyptic world. Right. Nobody's coming. Right. So basically all we've done is prolong their agony. Yes. So, you know, that, that's that's kind of, one of going to be one of those tough decisions. So you're, yeah, you're, that's you're a very to tough for. decision. So gauze, hemostatic gauze, um, um, we did a wound packing. We had one class that was just phenomenal. Did yeah, so understand? it's very, very <coughs> important to take classes. Yeah. If you ever see a class called Stop the Bleed, that's the one to take. Take it, because what we did was we actually took a, a rolled gauze, or, or actually it was a, a, a um, corrugated gauze, and packed the wound. So we had a, a dummy that had um, spurting blood, like an arterial bleed, in the arm that replicated basically the, the artery in the arm. And you had to go down and apply pressure to it and then pack the gauze down in it so that you used the skin of the perforation as a pressure to hold the gauze down and put pressure on the uh, artery to stop Correct. the bleeding. Oh, wow. What a great class. And, and you could feel it and everything else. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, my daughter, she's a surgical tech, and I keep trying to get her on here. You know, to explain what, you know, everything that you have to do and what it actually feels like. Yep. Cats and prepping, so. way to go. And so, sue me, it depends on whether you like them or not. All right. And whether or not I'm going to gonna step work. out so we can keep going. But it was a pleasure. Oh, no, don't step out. No. No. It's great. I, I love having you all on here because you're, remember, this is your channel too. <coughs> so you add value, you know, and, and we appreciate that. Um, Thank you, Lee. You know, and, and, and so we're all in this together. You know, it, it, I can't be up here all the time and just pontificate. True. That's, you know, so we need. Yeah, everybody. it takes all of us to, um, you know. Oh, the, now, it, here's my code breaking experience. What is this person called? I can't see it. I bet you 99 to 1, it's I really love horses. And you know, I used to work with horses. Yeah. I did find out one thing. Make sure you don't get any skin folded up in the uh, cinch strap when you're heaving on the cinch strap to put a saddle on them because they can reach around and take a hunk out of your arm. with the Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I used to work at a horse farm for like three years. It was a breeding farm. It was race horses, but I'll tell you, there are some really mean horses. 
Yeah. Because it's going to be one they, or the other, Utah, Mike, and I don't know which it's going to be, to be honest, like, with, honest with you. Uh, but um, Maggie's also talking about stitching up wounds. And, and I'm, I am of the mind where I, I really don't want to stitch up a wound. And, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I prefer butterflies or, or something like that that is non-invasive. Uh, I don't like staples. I don't like uh, stitching in a, in a non-sterile environment. True. And the reason is, is because remember that every staple or every stitch adds two more puncture wounds to that site. So if you're in a non-sterile environment, you've just tripled the chances of an infection setting exactly. in that's going to take their life later on. Exactly. So I would prefer to just go ahead and uh, debride the wound and uh, and cleanse it with, you know, I, I used to, probably for those of you who look back maybe a couple years ago, <coughs> I was on a kick. I probably have a couple gallons now of pressure. Uh, you can get them at Walmart, the, the pressure saline bottles, uh, sterile saline, a wound wash. And so get plenty of that so you can wash wounds out and get every debris out and everything else. Then after that, dry it off, pat it dry, close the wound. And I use a stero strip or a piece of tape or something like that. Um, they also have a new one that is just super neat. And you, it's basically a Ziploc system. So you're going to put it over the wound. And it's got, you know, three pieces of tape that go across. So you got the wounds here. And you're going to go across the wound. And then on top, it has all these little um, kind of like, uh, oh, what are those bands that have the little thing? You use them for... for Kind of like this, you, you pull on it and it tightens things up. What's that called? A, a uh, I want to call it a zip lock, but it's not zip tie. Zip tie. Zip tie. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> but it's basically got the same mechaniz mechanization as the zip tie. When you pull on those, it basically pulls that wound shut, but it's using tape instead of an invasive procedure. Right. So, yes, cayenne pepper is a great way to stop bleeding. And it feels about the same as Sealox. So both of them hurt like all get, get out. Um, you'd be oh, surprised. Cayenne that. pepper stops the bleeding. Huh? No, cayenne pepper stops the bleeding. I just yeah, read yeah. that. Wow. I really didn't know that. So if Yoxerus was, he was a radiologist. And spent too much time working trauma, so he did a lot, when, which wasn't in his scope of practice. I was uh, uh, listening to uh, I, I listened to Relevant Radio, and they were interviewing uh, a, a professor, and uh, then they had they also had a radiologist on the, the show, and they were talking about the invasion of AI, and this radiologist said that. He believes that his job is going to be one of the first to go in the medical profession that it's going to be converted over to AI because all you're looking for is patterns and in, in radiology and patterns and, and discriminatory uh, uh, differences between past and present. And, right. so, and, you know, that that is very easy to turn over to AI and say, are there any differences and what are they and what's the significance? He said so he would not advise his son to get into radiology at all. Exactly. And also, um, there was somebody put a, I think it was uh, Wolf. Uh, uh, Wolf. Well, there, he was talking about um, AI with mental health uh -huh. and how, you know, mental health is going to be um, taken over by AI. So, basically, we're going to end up you know, if we need help with mental health, we're going to be speaking to AI. We're yeah. not going to be speaking to a regular 
psychiatrist or a therapist. Yep, yep. So that's... Uh, Muskoka Omaha points out a very good thing, and that is using crazy glue. There is a surgical glue that is out on the market. You can find it in most uh, uh, pharmaceutical areas of grocery stores and things like that. <coughs> I have a couple tubes of it. My last abdominal surgery, they went in through my belly button. And so when they sealed it shut, they sealed it shut with that, uh, with that uh, surgical glue. And it was really something because, you know, you had this thing in your belly button that was kind of growing over time. And it was, oh, it was just a weird experience. And right. then when it popped out, it's just the whole plug popped out all at one time. It was something else. <laughs> then they had to reopen it and they put in uh, this tape. And, and so I had every day my wife had to take that tape out and then pack some more new tape in using some uh, sterile tweezers, these long ass tweezers. And uh, that was not fun at all. Right. Not nice having stuff stuck into your belly button. Uh, no. What do you say? Oh, something, something about gauze. Shut up. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. No, I had, I have a brother that uh, had his foot on his. He had a brother that had a foot. Uh, they rebuilt his whole foot, and he had a drainage. Can you hear thing him? in the back of his uh, heel? Uh, that was stuffed with gauze that had to replace. Yeah, the but time. and as the uh, healing process come from the inside out. Right, the healing process was inside out, and everything like that. So there was a constant drainage. Yeah, there was a constant uh, drainage, but that was an injury to your brother's foot. It happened in Gainesville, Florida. Yeah, but still, you could that could happen anywhere. Right. Car accidents. But in, in house all and when when H when SHTF hits, that's probably a you're gonna die scenario because yeah. sepsis and so so. Well, I forgot what I was going to say. But we're, we're, he's got questions. He's got questions to answer. So, shh. No, I wanted to talk about that real quick. Um, but I forgot what it was I was going to say. You know, that's what you get for being 72. Um, so, Sumi says there's not much hope for penetrating abdominal wounds. And I now I remember what I was going to say. And it kind of has to do with this. If no help is coming, you're absolutely right. And that's the worst way to die. That's considered to be the most painful. Right. Uh, which is why Harikari, in the Japanese culture, they had somebody aside. So once you proved your 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 uh, worth by trying to restore your dignity by cutting into your abdomen, uh, they had somebody there to cut your head off, so that uh, you didn't have to endure the full pain. They would they would relieve you of that pain. Here's the rule that I was taught in first aid, and uh, so if the wound is deeper than it is long, don't seal it shut because it needs to basically heal from the inside out. So you're going to keep it packed. You're going to keep it wet. You're going to keep it sterile, but you're going to let it heal from the inside out. If, on the other hand, it's longer than it is deep, that's where you want to close the wound and stop the bleeding by closing the wound. So, you know, that, that's one of the basic rules is deep wounds don't get closed. Uh, shallow wounds do, okay? But it's all... A, a variable as far as if it's deeper than it is long, you know, then you don't close it. If it's longer than it is deep, then you close it. How's that for a general rule? Definitely. Very That's good. What I just said. All right. Depends on. So Fioxerus, who is in radiology, says that uh, radiologists are already using AI for mammograms. Yes, they are. Uh, 
I think the number one thing, and, and, and I'll see life, Maggie brings it up here as well. I think the number one thing we're going to encounter is going to be mental breakdown. Uh, I think that the vast majority of people aren't prepared for what life is going to be like afterwards. I also believe that a lot of us who think we're prepared are going to be in a state of shock. And uh, I just think that, that, you know, people are going to go nuts and uh, there will be people who will just freeze in place and they won't move and they'll just die. Um, yeah, it's going yeah, to be nice terrible. is going to be a big one, Sumi. Agreed. Oh, okay. So Teresa Buchanan says it was Wolf Fang, Holly. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, you all got to see my face. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> It gives them something better to look at than me. Come on. Oh, you're better looking than me. <laughs> yeah, super glue is is a, a valid way to uh, to to do it. You just don't want to put it internal. You want to put it external. Um, so um, it it is a good first aid rule. Let me see. Great. General, okay, so Maggie's agreeing with my my depth versus length uh, suturing uh, discourse. Uh, yes, and if there is a chunk missing, it's not going to be closable. So this mm -hmm. one, uh, when I had my emergency response trailer, uh, I was changing a 100-pound uh, butane or propane tank that was on the tongue of the trailer because I needed to, to, to uh, get a new one up there for the stove and everything. And a gust of wind came and blew that 100-pound propane tank off of the stand and it was going against the tongue and if it hit the tongue it was going to rupture and blow up and so I had to catch it well when I caught it this finger was in between the tongue of the trailer and that 100 pound uh, propane tank so it had a compound fracture and flayed the skin back and uh, my daughter who was like 14 at the time took drove me to the emergency room the closest town which was Lomita and uh, no we were in Lomita and this was she drove me into Lampasas and uh, we got the lamp passes, and then he had to basically, you know, put the bone back together and then do some crazy. He said, when you have these stitches removed, tell whoever removes them that it's a uh, lazy H stitch uh, that's holding the inside uh, muscles and everything together. And then the outside is just a singular a running stitch. I said, okay. So I was so afraid for so long, I would forget what the lazy H stitch was. But um uh, Evidently, I knew what I was talking about, and they didn't mess anything up when I when they took the stitches out. Uh, let me see here. What else have we got here? They're using super glue to close open heart surgeries, according to Pat Butler. Been doing that since the 1990s. Yeah. Wow, that's great. They yeah. used super glue on my mom's. That was six years ago. Uh, she had open heart surgery. They put super glue on her her skin to close after they closed it um but she's passed now but they did use the super glue and she so said, Dog, this is holly ivans and i put up an invitation if there was anybody in the chat that wanted to come up so i could try to see if i couldn't get my excel spreadsheet up um, because somebody had asked to see a, a form of keeping inventory. And Holly came up and agreed to kind of help with the discussion so I could look at my Excel spreadsheet. But I have to reboot my computer in order for that change to take place that allows uh, StreamYard to access my Excel. So we're just continuing on with the, with the pleasure of having Holly here with us as we were having this discussion. And we're about ready to shut it down because it's 9.05. Golly. Time goes fast, doesn't it? Yeah, it's 10.05 here. Wow. Yo, that's right. You're in Florida. No, I'm Jersey. Jersey? Where your your kid, your daughter is. Yeah, what part? Um, Janesburg. Okay, I don't know where any of that is. She's Exit 8A like, off the turnpike. She's off the Morris turnpike. Oh, okay. 
But that's all I know. She's north. Okay. Then she has to go into to Jersey City two days a week. Wow. She's got a long ways to go. Oh, really? Uh, let me see here. Yeah, I, I can see the questions. Okay, so alternative homesteading. Hello, welcome. Good to see you. And alternative homesteading used to live in, uh, and I'm going to be terrible with this. I know it's a Native American term, um, Manalapan, uh, New Jersey. Manalapan. Oh, Manalapan. That's not too far from me. That's like eight miles. Okay. That's eight miles east wow so he said alternative homesteading says is the bakery mendoka still there no we live in the town where mendoka's was no they they um when the pandemic hit they got out and they closed oh wow mendoka's is not here but they opened up a Misi bakery in Monroe, <laughs> Monroe Township, which is three miles from the house. Okay. So, but there's nothing like Mendokers. Sumi says you, you ought to see the, the ones they cut the sternum with the first time. So, and, and my dad called his his zipper. Uh, yes. They cut the sternum for the open heart surgery and then they... Put it back together. They wire the sternum back together. Yeah, she's right. The chest back together. Yeah. And then I had a, a friend who was, uh, she was the training director for sales training at Dell when I was the quality train, uh, training director at Dell. And uh, she ended up getting her PhD and becoming a Presbyterian minister. But she had a zipper. She had had open heart surgery as a child. And, uh, you know, it, she tried to keep it covered up. She very seldom had any kind of a, yeah, shirt or anything like that. But every once in a while, you could see it, and so I, I asked her about it, and she said, "Yeah, I had open heart surgery." But, okay, yeah, I think, I think we in. got enough. What do you think, Holly? Hey, it, it's been a wonderful night. Amen. And we haven't had any hail yet, so thank God for that. Yeah. Okay, so, the Book of Numbers, chapter six, verses twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. The Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. And so we ask that everybody be, Holly? Be kind. Be polite. Be the light. Oh. And respectful. Ignorance. Be respectful. Because we're all in this together. Together, and we're going to get through it together. You got it. There you go. So uh, thanks, everybody, for being I here. I love you all. Absolutely. I tell you what, and, and we'll try to do this. We'll try to get some of you all on if I can coerce you to do it. Uh, thank you so much, Holly, for giving us your time and your wonderful charm. And uh, well, thank you for well, adding value to the channel. Thank you for accepting me. I embarrassed myself, but I don't care. No, I'm getting too old to be yourself, embarrassed. No. I'm getting older. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Lee, I really appreciate you. Well, thank you, ma'am. We're all in this together. You know, that's and, right. We got to help each other all, all the time. And thank you, everybody who's out there. I thank hope you, everybody. You the first time we'll, we'll decide that we're worth your time and come back and see us on a regular basis. Hey, everybody, you know, don't be ashamed to come on. Just do it. Great advice. Just do uh, and it. I'm thinking about maybe not this Friday, but the following Friday, uh, doing an introduction to prepping. So I'm thinking about starting off with my little triangle. That's uh, speed, quality, and cost triangle. And I'm thinking about doing my timeline of events and when it's what when when it's best to buy what type of food. Yeah. Because um, we're all know. people. We're all doing the same thing, and we're all in this together. So so you know. If you have any ideas that you think I should be talking about in, in let's start pe other people into prepping, give me some of the first things you wish you had known the very when you first started out prepping so that we can put those in the, in the uh, first class. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everybody.
Thank you, Holly. Good night, everybody. And, uh, those of you Thank who are here, we hope you join us. I'm sorry, you were saying? Thank you. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.